Okay, we're now going to look at section 5, which is the critical path diagram. So, so far you will have a checklist or t a task list of things that you need to do, a PERT chart and a Gantt chart. Okay, so if you've done all three of them properly, the very minimum now you're working is hopefully a pass. This is now where we're looking at mer merits and distinctions. So a critical path diagram, I found a very useful video on YouTube. Again, don't want to take any credit for this, but if you're watching from home, I'd go to YouTube and type in critical path analysis made simple. It's by this, uh, this gentleman called Chris Croft. And I think it's the easiest one I've seen so far. So I think, I personally think it's the best way um, to explain what a critical path analysis is because it could be so complicated. So there are some videos out there that basically go around it the long way. Um, and I think this is the best video I've seen so far that explains it in such a simple way. If you follow the steps in this, you'll find it very, very easy. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to watch the entire video. It's only three minutes long. Uh, if you can't hear properly, I would suggest go to YouTube and just search for that and find Chris Croft and check this video out. It is very, very good. Um, if you can hear it, then of course, you. if you're listening in my lessons, just check it out. Uh, you're going to need some paper and follow it through. So I'm going to press play now and we'll talk about it in a moment. Critical path analysis made simple. I've been looking on YouTube at how people teach critical path analysis. This is also known as network diagrams. And God, they make it complicated, don't they? Have a look at some of these. These are all people explaining how to find the critical path. Now, you do need to find the critical path because it's the longest route through your diagram. And it's therefore going to be the quickest that you can do your project. You can't do your project quicker than the longest route. So, you so I'm going to stop there for a second. Basically, um, it might sound a bit confusing, but what the gentleman is saying is, uh, ask yourself, you know, you, you're going to go back to your managers. Let's go back to what we've been asked to do. You're going to create a user interface, basically a piece of software. It's for this doc, uh, doctor's surgery or doctor's practice, medical practice uh, in the mock. In the real thing, it'll be something else. Um, but the manager wants to know how long it's going to take. You know, they've given you a time limit. Now, hopefully, you remember how long they said they they've given you. Ho I'm going to give you a second to remember. Okay, and hopefully, you got the answer right, which is four weeks. They said they wanted this in four weeks, but they were concerned about how long it's going to take. So you have to then create a critical path to prove that you can do it within that time frame. If you do the critical path and you think you find out actually it doesn't take five weeks, that's the earliest you can do it. Five weeks is your it's your shortest time. Then of course the manager is going to say, well that's too short. We need it done in less than that. We need it. The deadline is four weeks. So this is the whole point of these these um, project management tools, these uh, planning tools that we've had, the Gantt chart, the ch the PERT chart, and now we're looking at the uh, critical path analysis. Your longest route in this critical path diagram that you're about to make is the shortest time that you have because think about it the shortest time in there is the shortest time you can do a specific task but to you you want to find the longest path from start to end because the longest path is how long it will take as a bare minimum to finish everything yeah so your longest path is the shortest time that it, that you can come back to yeah, go back to the managers with. So hopefully that will make a little bit more sense in a second if we continue watching this, okay? And hopefully when you see his example, which is a lot simpler than the one you see right here, it will make a little bit more sense. You need to find it, but it doesn't have to be this complicated. In a minute, I'm going to show you a really simple way to do it. But the question is, why do people make it so complicated? And I think it might be because they want to look clever, but I think more likely they just regurgitate the way that they were taught and nobody's ever stopped and thought this is ridiculous no one's ever thought no one's actually got time to do this in real life can't we find an easier way and that's what suddenly struck me it doesn't have to be this complicated i think there's perhaps a third reason as well by the way which is that computers do it like this so what they're doing in these really horrible difficult videos is they're showing you how computers calculate the longest route but human beings are different to computers. We can just see the answer with our eyes. So a much easier... Uh, before we carry on further, I just want to mention one thing. I know some of you may have seen a video, uh, sorry, pictures in a, a, a there. 
and you might be thinking, wait a minute, sir, I've already done this. You know, the PERT chart that I've created in a, a previous section it looks exactly like it. Uh, don't be mistaken. Uh, and don't, don't be fooled. It's not the same. It might look similar, but it's not the same. So bear with this clip and this, uh, this video. It is a different style, a different technique uh, that you still need to show to get the higher marks. Okay, so just bear with uh, this video and let's continue watching. Your way to get the critical path is to do as follows. Write each task on a post-it note and stick them on a big bit of paper or even a whiteboard if you've got it, like this. Put the arrows on connecting the tasks and put the time on each task. How long do you think each task is going to take? And by the way, that's not the hours worked, it's the elapsed time. So if it's a five hour job, you think it'll take a week, put a week. I usually like to use weeks. So you've got a diagram drawn out with the arrows and the times. How long is that going to take you? Maybe 20 minutes, and maybe quite fun to do that. And once you've got that, you don't have to do all the things that they have on those other videos. You don't have to do the forward pass and the backward pass and the float. All you do, you just look at the diagram and just look at the longest path. So on my diagram, can you see the longest path? See if you can spot it. And yeah, sure enough, there it is. So it's easy. The critical. Right, so what the gentleman is talking about here is um, notice here, first things first. Um, this is slightly different from the PERT chart. So in the PERT chart, the tasks would be actually on the arrows themselves. On the critical path analysis, the tasks are in these boxes here. So when you draw this out, this could be a circle, uh, and you put the numbers on inside there, and the number is basically talking about how many days it will take for you to do that. So ta this first task is market research, in this example that is. So the first task in this example is market research, that will take four days. Then that one connects to writing the business case. That will take one day. Once that's done, so therefore that's taking five days to do, you can then do two things. First one, get funding, that will take four days, and find premises, that's six days. That Once you get the funding, you can then start making a website, which will take eight days. And you can also sign the lease, but you can't sign the lease until you find the premises. Can you see how they're connected now? So that finally uh, premises could take up to six days. So by the time you've added this up, now look at this, four plus one plus four is nine. But you know you've got this, this is six days. So six plus four is 10, plus that makes it 11. So therefore that's 11 days. Even so by the uh, ninth day, you've got this point, but actually be up to 11 days before you get the premises uh, done as well, which means it'll be 11 days before you can sign the lease, even though you finished before that for this task here. So to put simply, boys and girls, the longest path, which is what he was referring to early on, is adding the numbers to see which is giving you the biggest number. Okay. So some of you might, think, might be thinking, okay, but why isn't uh, this route here going up rather than down? and then going down here and up. Because it's not about the arrows, it's about the numbers. So if you add, to, for example, four plus one plus four, that makes you eight, nine, plus zero, still nine, plus two, that's 11, plus two, 13, go back here, that's 13 days. If you go down, um, follow the path that he's identified as the longest route, and add the numbers, you'll see that's the biggest number. Four plus one plus six, yeah, that's uh, 11. Plus zero is still eleven. Plus eight, that's nineteen. Plus zero, so that route gives you nineteen days. Yeah, so it's the longest path in terms of the numbers being added up. Yeah, and you can test this out. You can go through the other route here, and you see you'll get a a, a smaller number. So eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So the seventeen going to the top, and so on and so forth. So the longest path here. Is that middle one where he's highlight, highlighted with the red, which means if you had to go back to the manager, if this was your uh, critical path analysis, you'd say the quickest you can get back to them is, uh, I think I believe it's a 19 days, yeah, eight plus six plus one plus four, yeah. So that is the quickest you can get back to them. So this is how you need to do it, um, and I would suggest you could do some piece on oh, a piece of paper. You can get if you need post-it notes. If you just ask me, I'll give you some, uh, and organize it like this. And once you've got it on paper like this, then you can draw it out. Uh, very similar to how we did the uh, PERT chart like so, and you just type it in. You can type in the first task, so the first task as an example could be um, conduct uh, interview, there we go, it might be a little small, so make it larger, 
Oh, spelling is horrible. There we go. There we go. And that's that. And that's one day for that. So we don't need these anymore. So can you see per charts need these numbers here because the tasks are the arrows. In a uh, critical path analysis, the tasks are the circles themselves. And the numbers here indicate how long you take for each one. And these just need to go through it once a time. So once you've got this uh, drawn out on a piece of paper or with the post-it notes, you can then go to PowerPoint and do the same thing here. And then print screen, paste it into uh, your part, part, so your critical path diagram section here. Okay. Um, I do have, I believe, a template. So if you're in my class, I might give you a template, which is here. But you can just as easily do it here as well. Um, this template I found from a website. I'll tell you where it is. Again, not taking any credit. You can just go onto the website, and all credit is due to them. Um, and use theirs if you want to. But you could, you can just see it's pretty easy to do yourself, to be fair, uh, once you have the gist and understanding of how it actually connects with each other. Um, so hopefully that loads up. There it is. Now this one is a little bit more complicated. You don't need all this information. I think the way the gentleman just showed in the video is much better than that, uh, which is similar to this. Um, so yeah, I would personally stay away from these kind of, uh, per, uh, uh, sorry, not per charts, uh, uh, a critical analysis um, diagrams. So once you got this, you print screen and you paste it into. Sorry, let me go back. You print screen it into that section there. And again, for the higher marks, you'll explain just a couple of sentences, explain what the longest uh, path is, how long you think you'll take uh, for you to complete the whole project, and whether that is within the time frame that the manager has asked you. And again, remind yourself, what did the manager say? He or she wants it within four weeks. So after you've done the, uh, the critical path, can you do it in four weeks? Yes or no? Okay, so um, that brings us to the end of this video. In the next one, we're going to talk about mood boards.